All right, I turned the AC off. I'm recording chapter 12 and 13 back to back. 12 was very hectic, as anybody who watches that will acknowledge. But chapter 13 probably will be too. It's hot as fuck. Um, I'm going to go as long as I can have the AC on. Uh, prescience. To be prescient to means to be very in the moment, I believe. I think. That's present. Prescient. I think prescient, if you want to summarize it, can mean like to be very timely or meaningful in the moment. That's bullshit. Anyway, uh, I thought I knew what the word meant, and I don't, so let's go into it. So he's just no scoping like Black Ops days. Um, hit that guy from like fucking. Gotta be pretty far fucking away. Uh, I'll let the, the power scaler tell us how far away, but pretty far away. Um, so yeah, Boruto has to get sniped because apparently, like, nobody can, like, interrupt this guy, even though Delta was supposed to do that and she just didn't do anything at all. Why would he possibly come at that moment? Is there any good reason why Bug would interrupt him at that very moment? He could have done it at any point in time and he just chose to. Anyway, Sasuke got killed. Bug is very buggy. I didn't mean pun was not intended. Perhaps it's a divine intervention. <laughs> uh, what's stopping him from killing him anyway? I guess maybe he needs to find out who the accomplice is. I thought maybe like off panel, like they actually knew it was Kashi and Koji and they told him, but I think it's all the information they have is that Morta has an accomplice. I mean, I don't think you would need a high level of like, intellect to figure that one out, but, you know, whatever, I guess. Um, so, I guess what the main tail beast is hoping to do here is draw out uh, Boruto. That's why it's leaving him alive. Because realistically, like, it shouldn't take him more than, like, 10 seconds to just put a beam into Boruto and him right here. So, in the first... Five pages, four pages, real content. Um, what, three pages for real content? I mean, we already got this dude, like, running away. Like, he's like, oh, shit. Well, you know, fuck. Uh, I need to find out who this this uh, this, this plug is for information. I need to find this guy. Boruto escapes death. Like, this is the type of shit. Like, this is when people are like, no, I don't, I don't really think Boruto's manga is that crazy. Like, in the first three pages, we got, like, more shit than a lot of manga will give you in an entire chapter. I do wish it was a, you know, a weekly format, but who the hell is this? Oh, this Boruto. Okay. That's long hair Boruto. Okay. So we're going to flashback. Let's go. Let's go, Jiraiya. It is funny that, like, Kashi and Cody's the only one I don't call, like, his Naruto counterpart. But I'll be like, yeah, I'll... Hawaki, Sasuke all day. I don't understand what how my brain works sometimes. Are you scared of toads? Is that how toads always work to use them as, like, teleportation means? Maybe I don't know. I didn't I didn't know you could use toads like that. I don't think they did that in OG Naruto. Summoning Jutsu. Oh, okay. Well that makes sense. So he basically just recalled the toad and Boruto just happened to be touching it. Exposition, man, let's go. Use Genjutsu to camouflage it. Orochimaru, of course, having tons of basis to just diddle people. Oh. So he's not a real toad. Okay. Huh. I mean, this isn't a real Jiraiya, so... What what was in the first, like, couple of chapters of, Bar of Baruto? That guy telling him, like, hey, you could, um... You do a lot of a lot of real ninja stuff with these these, uh, these scientific ninja tools. Let me re say that. They said it early in the original part of Baruto that you could do a lot of real ninja stuff with scientific ninja tools. Here we go. Real ninja stuff. Real toads. Real summoning jutsus. Real chakra. Does that mask that effective? Like, could you not... I guess you couldn't see the big warden in his fucking nose. Maybe that. Maybe that's what threw him off. I didn't know Amadu had a last name. Sanzu. Almost like Sinzu, because he's a healer, right? Amadu. It's a healer. He heals. Not really heal. He heals uh, his own desires to do very bad things for his own selfish reasoning. But, you know. So I think omnipresence might be affecting him, or at least he's trying to like dig through omnipresence. Ask him if he's been Uzumaki Barto his whole life. 
I just said omnipresent and omnipotence. My bad. I hope I didn't say that often in chapter 12. I hope I didn't. And yeah, he's been affected by... This is what I was saying in chapter 12. Like, I'm pretty sure like it's affected effectively everybody on the planet. That's kind of how I took omnipotence to work. Um, and Kajin Cody, who was nowhere near the village, seems to have been, also been affecting him. So I think it's a planetary ability and scope, although it may not require a planetary chakra. I'm not even sure if Ida uses chakra. I, mean, I guess if you use jutsu, you have to use some form of chakra. I don't know. But Kashin Koji, he at least was adept, adept enough to kind of realize like it might be fabricated. I don't know a whole lot about the ability you call omnipotence. So that day you were chased from your village appears everyone's memories to you and Kawaki did get flipped. So wait, 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 wait. So he's saying that from that point on, it got flipped. So basically we're like, Bar uh, Naruto got killed. From that moment on, it got flipped. I took it to mean like their entire lives were different. Because that's the only way it can make sense to me that Kawaki is Boruto's, like, or Naruto's kid. Cause that's how people look at it, is that, like, Kawaki is Himawari's sister, Naruto's kid. Um, but I, th I think Kashi and Koji may just be saying here that, like, that day was when it happened. Maybe not necessarily, like, the timeline when it got flipped. That actually makes a lot more sense. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Omnipotence worked. How are you able to grasp the actual state of things objectively? Kashi and Koji's just been, like, the, the master in the cut, just... Seen all these things happen. He's like the, the Sosuke Aizen of this universe, apparently. It's just fun because, like, his counterpart, really his progenitor, is Jiraiya, the goofiest guy who, you know, obviously was a very smart... He's, I mean, he's a Sonny, you know, so very, obviously a very smart person, but, like, from his being to birth something like this is crazy. I'm glad that, you know, at least for some people who may not have, you know, the most um, ability to take things, you know, beyond the face value. I'm glad some people are able to see, like, hey, Boruto's actually, like, emotionally affected by being isolated in the way that he is. I'm sure some people are just like, no, he's been a hard ass the whole time. He definitely, you know, just kind of thugged it out. Like, no, this guy like really, uh, this stuff beats him up inside, you know. I'm just watching this couple, like, basically, like, just go to town out here. I think they... Are they going to start fucking? I don't know what. The thing with PDA, or public displays of affection, is that you kind of, like, get into this point where you're just, like, what's, like, the point where you go too far? Generally, people are, like, fucking. But I'm like, okay, that's probably too far. But, like, anything that's a little bit more obvious than, like, just fucking, like, is it just, like, giving somebody, like, a handy J? Like, is that too far? Like, well, what's it too far for public display? I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, this is, like, the deleterious effects uh, is it deleterious? Del deleterious? I think it's deleterious. Effects of, like, just being in a fucking heat sauna and recording a video. So, yeah, Boruto is emotionally affected by what he's had to experience. The isolation. Uh, Mr. Thug Isolation. Great album by Lil Ugly Man. Is this real? Like, this whole... He makes it seen his memories in this format? Oh, my God. What the hell is this? What the fuck? Excuse me? It's like some... Bardock second movie shit. What the hell? Just seeing Time Lodge out of nowhere? Gaining some new ability on Death's bed? So this really is just him seeing all these different places or different timelines. I think this is new. This one with Ida and uh and Kawaki. I think the, I think these other two like actually happened in real life. Cause this was like I think when um when he was like uh, in the universe with Naruto and Sasuke and the uh, and Momoshiki slash Boruto, and this was when Cove like kind of unlocked his Super Saiyan ability. Um, I think that one's new. As you can kind of see, his his pupil gets like translucent here, which usually means something. Like I know that's like the most like baseless statement of all time, but like typically, like when you see like. Typically, it means like someone's like about to die. When you see like the pupil go like blank in a manga, that's typically what that means. But here he's seeing even more of them. So I'm guessing Hidari slash Sasuke does come back and add even another person. Oh, uh, this person here is completely unfamiliar to me because Moegi has her little uh, kind of hairstyle, and that's Bug. Sasuke looks like Sasuke. This guy doesn't look like anybody, from what I can tell. Nobody that I'm aware of, anyway. 
until 10 cells of self is destroyed, this planet will continue being in danger. And I mean, that's what he's seeing. That may be just the one from Naruto, the series. But he could be seeing an actual uh, fruit come to fruition. No pun intended. I'm comparing. So he compared basically the future that he was able to see, which I hope he goes into some kind of context about what that ability is, allowed him to see the future, because I'd like to understand what the hell that came from. And then the visions, he kind of figured out more or less like where the fallacies lied or lay. And yeah, his, so kind of like what I, I had to go against my own grain here in a sense. Uh, his perception, his memory said that Kawaki is always Hokage's son, and he has to battle with that, obviously. How did you come to it all of a sudden? Uh, Shibai Otsusuki. Okay, so this is a guy that acquired... It's kind of like the primary Otsusuki. I don't know if we talked about this guy before. He might have. I just don't recall. So this is basically the, the, the head head dog, the original tribal chief of Otsusuki. So they received transplants of Shibai cells. How did he give access to those cells? I'm not sure, but we'll just let it go, I guess. Um, I'm sure it's explained at some point. I don't fuck it. Like, it's been so long, you know. Boruto's a very, like, thick manga. Like, it wasn't just the average Joe manga. It had some, some size to it, some girth. Let's just say that. All right, I'm back. Uh, I ate some tacos. And I probably ate too many tacos. I drank some Coke, and it tasted like shit. Listen, man, the human, the American human diet is not good for anybody. Let me just say that right now. If you are an American human being, ask yourself the thing you put in your body is what you need to put in your body. I feel like shit right now. Anyway, um, also talking about shit. The opposite of shit, Boruto. So at this point, we're looking at Chibai cells. Manifesting Shinjutsu, complete luck. And he basically just laid down every single ability these guys had. Burrow died immediately, and Delta defeated. I don't remember how she was defeated, to be honest with you. But she was defeated, and she came back, reprogrammed in a different way. So only she had the opportunity to necessarily, like, have that, uh... What's that thing that happens to Saiyans before they get killed? Uh, or when they almost get killed? Uh, Zenkai boost. She didn't get a chance to get a Zenkai boost. But he did. So prescience. So I cannot say omnipresence again. It is too close to prescience. You remember that meme from Infinity War with Doctor Strange. He has that ability. It seems pretty fucking good to have, I would say. They have multiple futures, multiple timelines. Uh, we see when it actually happened. But he didn't. It didn't happen at that point in time. He, he was not aware of Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, this didn't happen by that point. The The fight with Kaji Koji and Jigen happened first. Then Ishiki comes out, and then he fights Naruto and Sasuke and tries to... Yeah. All right, take one fate we've already escaped. If Ishiki had killed the Kohage... Ko, Kohage? Kohage, wow. Okage. The planet would have been wrapped up. And that was a timeline. Okay. Multiverses, let's go. Let's start getting some multiverse content in Boruto. Let's fucking go. It's a very high level of guidance to have. A guy who basically can see everything. I mean, not see everything, but like... It's like the mini version of the Almighty. Like, I mean, literally, it's the Doctor Strange ability that I talked about earlier. But you think of like the scope of what that move allowed Yuha to do in the Bleach verse. Like, obviously, it helps that he could actually interfere with timelines. While it just seems like... Basically, Ishiki... Or not Ishiki. Uh, Koshin, Koshin Kaji... Um, he can just see them. Like, he doesn't seem to have, like, he can just reach in there and, like, affect it. He can just, like, see what happens and try to adjust accordingly. It's good he led off the omnipotence explanation, uh, because he kind of roped Boruto in a little bit. It's still a very young Boruto, as you can tell. Like, he's not as brackish or jagged as he has appeared to be. Aren't things just going to happen? This kind of speaks on what I was just talking about, about his scope of influence with different timelines. Aren't things just going to happen a certain way no matter what? So seeing all sorts of futures, how is that useful? Intel, your life on the run, fear prevents you from being ended up cornered like earlier. That would definitely be helpful. Or I could import the present to you, moves, and jutsu your future you as master. Wouldn't that accelerate the learning and optimize training? 
There's no timeline paradox as I'm only relaying what I saw. It's totally standard procedure for prescience. I'll also tell you how to rescue Chiha Sasuke from his tree. Anyway, there's no timeline paradox. I fuck with these dudes for getting in front of it in the first place. They're just like, oh, the whole time thing, just forget about it. Don't even worry about it. That that won't be a problem here. Because as you can tell, if you've watched enough forms of media, no one handles time mishandling amazingly. Like some forms of media do it better than others. Typically, the less you try to engage with the definition of paradoxes, the best they tend to do. The deeper you get into it, the worse it usually goes. So this one's just saying, fuck it. Basically, he can see stuff. He has no ability to alter it whatsoever. He just sees it. And the most important thing is he can... I don't know if he can see, like, the golden thread, so to speak. I don't know if he can see the actual, like, four-fact future timeline. I think he just sees different ones. And hopefully... He ends up on the right one. That's how I seem to understand it. Because otherwise, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Doctor Strange has worked that way. Like, Doctor Strange is. But the way Doctor Strange has worked is that he focused on the timeline that would lead to them beating Thanos. It wasn't necessarily that it was an indicator for us the right timeline, it was just the one that had the conclusion he was looking for. So maybe that's how uh, Kosh and Koji is kind of evaluating the ability. Like, he just wants to see the timeline that gets him an end result, which his end result here is trying to obviously prevent Tentails from appearing and taking over the planet. So I guess that's, like, kind of his modus operandi, and whatever timelines allow that to happen, those are the ones he kind of bases off of. I imagine it probably is pretty similar to Infinity War in that there's probably going to be one timeline that actually happens in. Um, with the stark difference in power and the lack of intel on the side of good here normally, um, I would think that most timelines would end up with our guys losing in this. So, you know, interesting uh, interesting thing going on here. He seems to have a lot of experience or at least a lot of knowledge about presidents that you would think uh, he wouldn't have, but he definitely seems to be as, uh, available to access information that, uh, you know, may kind of be like scrolls or instructional content or something like that as well. But that's just my kind of interpretation. The very worst possible future at this moment. Ten tails will break free of Code's control and evolve in a new way. They'll likely show up before us as multiple divine tree people who possess individual minds. I have a call them everything in the world, but we'll call them divine tree people. It will be... Ideal to dispose of ten tails root and branch before that, but the likelihood we'd succeed is low. And nearly all the features I see, they're divine tree people. So that's again kind of how I'm thinking about it. He just kind of like has different timelines that have different possibilities. Well, let me get back into it. Jura. Okay, we do know his name, Jura. Boruto, he is going to kill you. With the flash forward that we have, Boruto is supposed to get to this point. I saw it on Twitter. Actually, there's a, a scene I saw on Twitter um, pointing out that scene. And the dialogue in that scene, the, the whole flash forward karma, uh, karma, Kawaki versus Boruto with karma activated. Like, I, I believe it's something to the effect of, like, is this a real situation that's happening or just a real timeline that's happening? Something like that effect. Many future show it happening. What well, falls is pretty similar. Kawaki is devoured and our planet dies. Okay, that's... Bar Baruto is clearly the strongest, like, good guy on the planet at this point. Especially from what we've seen. Infinite possible futures. Our future has started to change one second at a time with him learning of this. Okay. So there are some branches that grow from knowledge being spread <laughs> i'm sure kashi koji saw this happening too he's not gonna kill kawaki he's just nindo way as one might say ten tails is my way much clear i'll do it finish off code and ten tails both well he did stop code he didn't finish him off but he did stop him temporarily he probably should have killed him i don't know why he didn't but 
looking looking now what we have available probably should just kill cold and got over with but you know a little bit too late i suppose i don't, he do, I don't think he had any intel but we don't know he, i don't know if he had any intel on what would happen if he killed cold maybe he, I, don't, I don't think he seemed to know cold was going to escape at that point in time the beginning of this uh spinoff or sequel i guess this could be a sequel, right? Because I mean, it's a sequel to Bard, so Bard was a spinoff to Naruto. This is a... so we got that that knowledge here, but clearly, uh, Bard didn't actually get killed. But that that knowledge does kind of keep in the back of our minds here. Oh yeah, because Himawari is um, she has like Hinata has some healing abilities, right? I know in all the damn uh, Naruto games, she would have like that that pot of like healing salve that she would give to Naruto. And uh, it's like a ninja item in some of the later Naruto games. But I feel like I feel like had some healing powers. I don't know. I may be wrong about that. But obviously, Himawari has Tail Beast Chakra, which is as good as healing as, as anything else we've seen his entire. Other than Hashirama cells, and maybe even stronger than those, uh, Tail Beast Chakra heals better than anything else in this universe. So, score one for Himawari. And uh, this is the first time that Kawaki has seen her uh, tail beast energy. <laughs> I mean, so the thing about it is she, this kind of goes back to the conversation I had a few episodes ago. She has tail beast chakra, which as um, there's so many Ks, Kurama said um, it was just blind luck that she got it, right? But like, realistically, like I, I always thought like it was, Odds wise, a higher percent chance they would go to Himawari or Baruto because of their, you know, parent, their shared parent. So it just happened with Himawari instead. I wonder what happened if Himawari did tag Baruto. Can't miss this. Are they going to lock up Baruto? Oh, shit. Sumeri, no, don't let them do that, man. I need Sumeri to unlock her ability and save Baruto. What would Samira's ability be? I don't have no fucking clue. She still does refer to him as Big Bro, so... Even though she had some, uh... Illusions... That were a little bit shattered by how cold he was a couple of... A couple of episodes ago? Bridge, like, I think it was like the first episode of the season. Or the... What, what do they call these? Arcs, I guess? Arcs? Uh, the first episode of the arc. Restart. The first chapter of this arc... I believe that was when Kawaki was mad cold to his sister, Himawari. And in that, she had some illusions that were, I feel a little bit uh, shattered with omnipotence and the way it works. But she still does call him Big Bro. So that, that is relevant. And uh, nobody can really stop Kawaki from you know, kind of putting down Boruto if he's injured. The rest of them can't do anything to the guy. I mean, he may not be able to use any jutsu, but I'm sure he'll figure something out. Master Konohamaru. It's a measure dictated by law. We need the intel he possesses. Alert Lord Eighth. Kashin Koji. So he now knows that Kashin Koji is still here. So they lost the, the, the route that would have saved Sasuke. Boruto Dammer got killed. Kawaki knows of Himawari's uh, Nine Tail Chakra. And uh, Boruto is going to be in prison for a little bit. So a lot of events occur. So as long as they have that thing right there, they can pretty much grow more uh, copies of whoever gets killed. Hidari, Sasuke, whatever. So just killing Hidari alone will not save Sasuke. Okay, so this is the one we see in the future. In Akash and Koji's future. But we don't know who it is trapped in a tree. Between them not explaining it, at all who this is in the flash forward and then um you know they've kind of given a little bit of weight here in this situation i feel like somebody's pretty powerful we still don't know who jura is i'm assuming to this day the jura is still just like the main kind of like representative of the tail beast that they all came from but uh don't know who he is exactly and then we also like don't know who this person is that's going to be it. Uh, I feel like we've accomplished a lot in these uh, couple of reviews here. A lot of content that I got to kind of cut down. Uh, very sloppy in recording. But, um, you know, I feel like that's a little bit fun sometimes, you know, just to, just to slop it up a little bit. So 
Um, I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit. And if you guys need anything from me, want anything from me, just let me know. I'm always here.